Let's take an illustration. We'll go about this in two different ways. We'll start in the service industry. I'm in the hospital bed. Smiling face comes in the room and says, Good morning, Mr. Lee. My name is Sherry. I'm here to draw your blood today. We'll probably be drawing your blood every day to check on your progress. And I say, Well, good morning, Sherry. But you see, now she's finished with her script. And she has nothing left to say until she says, Is there anything else you need at the end? And so for the next seven minutes, we have complete silence. Does that begin to feel awkward? Well, silence is not only awkward, but just before an invasive procedure, and I have deliberately taken the least invasive, least painful, least anxiety-producing experience patients could possibly have and still call it invasive, to make my point. In silence, where does the patient's mind go? Just before a procedure that's invasive. To everything that can go wrong, you can't help it if you try. Well, how many things can go wrong with a blood draw? You say, well, not that much. Well, you're all professionals in health care. You can discount this. But when I was nine years old, my mother told me they could put a bubble up your arm, go right to your heart, and kill you. (laughs) Did you ever hear that? It could kill you with a bubble. Yeah. What else could go wrong? Did you know they could blow out your vein? Yeah, think about that next time. They could blow out your vein. (laughs) Bleed out underneath. Big, big bruise on there. Hurts to bend your arm for a week. I know because it happened to my son. You know what they say when they blow out your vein? Oops. (laughs) There's a reassuring word. Oops. And then they say, give me your other arm. I want to say, bring me another phlebotomist. (laughs) Well, if I'm having all these thoughts, oh, by the way, how many sticks? There's one that you worry about. Ow, 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 ow. Yeah. If I'm having these kind of thoughts, what happens to my heart rate? Goes up. What happens to my blood pressure? Goes up. When your heart rate and blood pressure goes up, what happens to your pain threshold? Goes down. Everything hurts more than it should. So when she puts that little, inner, that little bicycle inner tube or whatever it is around my arm and tights a knot in there, she catches some of my skin and it hurts. And I look down there and I think, you know what? If you can't see the skin in the knot, how will you ever find my face? <laughs> We're talking patient perceptions. I look at her face when she's looking for her vein. It has a frown on it. What does a frown tell you when somebody's looking for something? Well, it means they can't find it. So imagine my surprise when she pulls up the needle and she starts to think, and I want to say, oh, hold it, hold it. I could get you a vein. Let me pump, pump this up for you. You know, there, quick. Of course, I don't do that. It's not very manly. This is more of the manly pose. Help yourself. There's my arm. (laughs) I'm brave. I can take anything. Put two or three bubbles up there. I'll show you I can take this. Blow it out. You try that on me. I can take anything. Seventeen sticks. No problem. Of course, I'm like this, and my pain threshold is way down here, which it puts a needle in. Ew, how big a needle is that? Look, she got it. First stick. How lucky was that? Now, if you draw blood, do you want to be thought of as lucky or good? (laughs) Patient perception. Nothing about her made me think that if that she would ever get that vein except by pure luck. Of course, I'm glad. She stands up and her script kicks in and she says, now then, Mr. Lee, is there anything else I can do for you? And I say, no, thank you, Sherry. <laughs> Do you really have to put me through this again tomorrow? I'm afraid and you do, Mr. Lee. And she's out the door and down the hall. In any way you can measure what she did, it was perfect. Perfect clinically, perfect for service, perfect for courtesy. But was she great? 
you can't improve on it. And you can't ask the patient how to improve it because the patient doesn't know. Good morning, Mr. Lee. My name is Sherry. I'm here to draw your blood today. And I say, well, good morning, Sherry. She says, by the way, do you live around here or are you from out of town? I said, well, no, I live around here. I raised two kids here. You see, she sensed that I was a little tense. And she decides to distract me. I don't know what she might say, but I tell her about my two kids a little bit. Son's a Macintosh computer technician. My daughter's an artist. And while I'm telling her this, she's already put a tourniquet around my arm and pinched some of my skin. But did I notice? Not much. I'm trying to tell about my kids. She starts feeling for a vein and I get focused real fast. My heart rate starts to do this. And I think, oh, oh, here it comes. And she looks up and says, by the way, you have a nice vein here, Mr. Lee. I should have no trouble with this one. What did that do to my heart rate? What did it do to my pain threshold? And then she goes on and said, by the way, beginners can be a little rough, but I have done this for 10 years. When they're trying to find somebody that can get a vein, they usually call the lab and say, is gentle Sherry down there? And I say, are they, they call you gentle, Sherry? <laughs> now, you see, once in a while, somebody will go, Tss, when I say that, which, of course, means too much Disney for this group. We're not going to call each other Tinkerbell <laughs> or gentle, Sherry. I don't think so. Too much Disney or too American for us. But I got that from clinical trials. Gallup reports them in the book, First Break All the Rules. They would go to a hospital, ask for the best nurses. They were doing a placebo experiment with a shot. Then they would ask for average nurses. Best nurses are those nurses. They get lots of compliments from patients. Average nurses get no compliments and no complaints. They each give a subject. They all are randomized. So this double-blind study, we at, they asked the Subject after each shot, the different subjects and the different nurses, they would get a pain rating by saying on a scale of 1 to 10, how much did that hurt? After they take away the double blind, they suddenly discover that your best nurses have lower pain ratings than your average nurses. And you say, well, how can that be? There it is on the videotape. The best nurses tend to say, this might sting a little bit, Mr. Lee, but I'll be as gentle as I can. What does the word gentle do to a person's anxiety? A little bit of fear. If I can say this for a blood draw, how much more important would this be for every other procedure that we do? But it are the passionate, compassionate, caring people that do this because it has to be done from the heart. You can't fake it. These authors say that experiences occur whenever an individual has been engaged in a personal or memorable way. The difference between these two Sherry's is that one engaged me in a personal, memorable way. And when she got up and said, is there anything else I can do for you? I will say, not right now, but if I have to have my blood drawn tomorrow, will you please be the one who comes back? Don't be sending rough Rudy up here. <laughs> I want gentle Sherry again. <laughs> and Deming says that difference between being perfectly satisfied and wanting the person back again cannot be measured, scripted, reduced variation, or standardized. It comes only from the heart. It can be physical, emotional. Hans Strelia pointed out that compassion can actually affect the immune system if you believe compassion can reduce stress in a patient. Mother Teresa said, we cannot, we can do no great thing. We can only do great small things with great love. Thank you very much.